Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we got a super exciting one for you. We're gonna be covering a brand new penny stock to the channel. The company name is Billy Goat Brands, and they offer exposure to a wide variety of different food and beverage related companies. So we're gonna talk about my bullish thesis in today's video. Before we get into it though, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a huge help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And let me know in the comment section below if you've heard of this company before, if you're currently holding shares of Billy Goat Brands, and how you think this company stacks up to some of the other food and beverage plays we've talked about on the channel previously. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're gonna be covering Billy Goat Brands Limited. Now this one's super exciting to me for a number of reasons that we're gonna get into in today's video. This is a venture capital firm that's really focused on identifying, incubating, and growing their investments in a number of different food and beverage focused companies. So we're gonna talk about their portfolio of different brands or different assets in a couple of seconds here. But this one, again, a true penny stock in every sense of the word. You can see they're currently trading at under six cents US. So they trade under the ticker symbol BGTTF on the OTC in the United States. And based on the share price you see here of about 5.8 cents, they have 143 million shares outstanding. So you're looking at a market cap on this one in the range of about eight to $10 million. And towards the end of the presentation, we're gonna compare Billy Goat Brands market cap to some other competitors in this space. So the food, beverage, ESG focused type of company space. And you're really gonna see why I think this is such an attractive investment opportunity at these levels. Now, if we look at a six month chart here, you guys, this company, Billy Goat Brands, was trading just under 20 cents US back at the end of November of 2021. So it has pulled back substantially. It's trading at about a third of what it was just a couple of months ago. And again, as we talk about on this channel, it's great to identify companies follow them, put them on your tracker, and then take advantage of these pullbacks or dips to acquire shares and really buy low when the opportunity presents itself. Now, with that being said, we're gonna jump over to the company website. We'll talk about their business model and then we're gonna do a deep dive into Billy Goat Brands investor presentation. There's a number of components within this company that hit close to home for me. And again, because of this ESG focus, you guys, environmental social governance focus that's really mandated at Billy Goat Brands, I think they are positioning themselves in a great way to take advantage of this huge appetite we're seeing from investors and the investment community for these type of companies. Companies. So if we pop over to the Billy Goat Brands corporate website, you can see they're focused on investing in the next generation of food. We're going to talk about some of the subcategories or three specifically that this company has identified in terms of their investment focus. And as I go on to say, Billy Goat Brands provides a diversified portfolio of expansion stage food and nutraceutical brands, bringing investors a platform for exposure to fast growing food and beverage companies. And we've talked about nutraceutical companies on the channel before, but essentially these are foods containing health giving additives or having medical benefit to the consumer. So obviously a huge trend we're seeing in the media and the public right now. Now the other thing I should call out here, you can see they quickly highlight their different portfolio of brands. We're gonna talk about each of these four in more detail towards the middle of today's presentation. They've got cold coffee, the vegetarian butcher, which actually has ties to Kelowna, BC, which is where I grew up, Sophie's Kitchen, and Evanescence, which is really involved in green or eco-friendly packaging. Now the other thing I'll call out here, you can see Billy Goat Brands also trades in Canada on the CSE under the ticker symbol GOAT. So honestly, I love that ticker symbol, you guys. And if you're located here in Canada and you wanna make an investment in this company, I'll bring up the ticker symbol here. You can see trades under ticker symbol GOAT or G-O-A-T on the Canadian Securities Exchange and closed out yesterday's session, April 6, at 13 and a half cents Canadian with a market cap in the range of about 13 to $14 million in terms of Canadian funds. 
Now, with that being said, we're going to jump over to the investment presentation. The thing I really like about Billy Goat Brands is it offers that diversification. So very similar to what you're getting with an early stage Berkshire Hathaway or something to that extent, but really focused on catering to some of these big macro trends we're seeing in the investment community right now, which is ESG, environmental social governance, and plant-based living. And we've talked about this plant-based living or companies that are focused on plant-based proteins or alternatives extensively on the channel. And I really do think this is the way of the future. And again, Billy Goat Brands offers a great opportunity to invest in a diversified portfolio of companies that are really trying to cater or serve this market. And that's a perfect segue to this slide here, which really talks about the focus at Billy Goat Brands on building that premium investment platform for fast growing CPG or consumer packaged good brands. And one thing that they specifically call out in the second sentence here, you guys, is this is not just an investment company. They're actually going in to partner with these businesses. So in addition to the capital investment or injection, they're providing strategic assistance, network connections, and helping to support these companies grow faster and obviously maximize returns for investors as partners in these businesses. So really there's three steps that they've identified in the investment presentation. So number one is obviously identifying these businesses. So with their vast industry knowledge, we're gonna talk about the leadership team and the experience that they have. They work to identify exciting companies in a variety of different markets. Again, all that fit within that ESG banner that are primed for fast growth and expansion. Once they've identified those, they're gonna go into an incubation phase. So after applying our process to narrow down the best suited opportunities or identify these opportunities, we make significant investment in the selected companies to provide the necessary capital to grow. So that's where the investment comes from. You're gonna see in a second here, there's a number of different percentage ownerships with these brands, but regardless, they invest capital or money to these companies so they can further build out their infrastructure, their retail footprint, or their distribution, whatever the case is, to really expand their portfolio and ensure these brands continue to grow. And then the final step here, they've categorized as invest. We work with our portfolio of companies to assist their leadership teams in scaling production, distribution, expanding their market opportunities, and growing their product lines. So exactly what we just talked about here, you guys, a simple three-step process that the team at Billy Goat Brands has really mastered. They have this down to a science, and they've now repeated it a number of times. And with that being said, this is a look at the current investment portfolio. Again, we're going to go into each one of these four in more detail towards the end of the presentation, but I did want to quickly put them on your radar along with the percentage ownership. So cold brew coffee, this is 100% owned by Billy Goat Brands, which is super exciting. The vegetarian butcher, so this is a butcher shop focused on plant-based alternatives with a number of different retail locations, one of which is actually in Kelowna, BC. They've got a 12.4% ownership in the vegetarian butcher. Sophie's Kitchen, 46% ownership. And then Evanescence Packaging Company, again, with a minority stake in that business but definitely one to be excited about as we're gonna discuss in a couple of minutes here. Now, in addition to this portfolio of four brands or four companies, there's an additional four that are currently undergoing due diligence by the team at Billy Goat Brands and two more that have term sheets out for review. So you can see they're actively focused on identifying new opportunities and building this brand portfolio that you see in front of you. Now, before we take a deeper dive into each of those four businesses, I wanted to take a step back and talk about some of the macro trends or categories that Billy Goat Brands has identified as potential investment opportunities or themes for the companies that they're really trying to go out and identify. So number one is the functional food market. And a great example of this is actually the functional mushroom market. So as you can see, this is ranked as one of the top 10 food trends by Whole Foods. Mushrooms have been used as health aids for over 2000 years. Typically they're consumed in a dry or powdered form. They can be combined with other products or herbs for unique benefits. There's a significant amount of research being conducted right now into the benefits or the effects of microdosing, which we've talked about on the channel, some of the companies that are involved in that space. And mushrooms also have an extremely long shelf life when they're correctly processed and packaged. So this is just one example within the functional food market 
but it's a great case study showing how the public or the general public is changing the way they look at food, specifically functional foods, and the way they can interact with these type of products. So in terms of the actual market opportunity, we're seeing a compound annual growth rate right now, you guys, just under 7%. So the functional mushroom market represented about a $10 billion US opportunity back in 2020. And by 2023, they're expecting that to grow to north of $23.4 billion. And again, this is part of that bigger macro trend you can see here with that global shift towards functional foods that are supporting the wellness of the consumer. So overall, this category is growing at 7.9% from now until 2025, or in terms of their compound annual growth rate. And again, this functional food market, the functional mushrooms being a great example of that, is just one of these three investment opportunities or themes that the team at Billy Go Brands has identified. The next one here is plant-based protein. So this is one we've talked about extensively on the channel here, you guys. This is a theme I see continuing for years and years to come. Again, a massive market opportunity with compound annual growth north of 7%. You can see the global plant-based protein market alone is expected to reach about $11 billion this year, so 2022. Plant-based dairy is expected to reach about $34 billion by 2024. The plant-based beverage market has grown by about 33% annually over the past five years. And alternative protein or alternative meat products, including plant-based proteins, are expected to grow by 14% annually through till 2024. So all of the different categories within the plant-based market, whether it's dairy, drinks, protein or meat alternatives are growing at an exponential rate. And this is why we're seeing so many companies rush to this space. Again, towards the end of the presentation, we're gonna look at some of the competitors in this space. Many of these we've actually talked about on the channel, and you'll start to see why the investment opportunity and the market cap of Billy Goat Brands in comparison to some of these other players really does look so attractive. Now the final of the three categories is really focused on what's called the blue economy. The blue economy by definition here you guys is focused on companies that are sustainably using ocean resources. And this again is a major trend that I don't see going away anytime soon. So you can see blue economy companies now account for about $32 billion in annual GDP in terms of Canadian dollars. The blue economy is focused on sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth while reducing the environmental footprint on the oceans. So again, I just got back from vacation. We were down in California. We spent a lot of time right by the ocean and this is definitely a natural resource that we wanna preserve for future generations. The global economic output of blue economy activities is currently valued as at about one and a half trillion dollars US. And what we're really seeing here, you guys, is technological innovation is now allowing us to reduce our reliance on oceans as the main food source for the human population. And that's where we're starting to see some of these plant-based proteins or alternatives come into center stage. Now, with that being said, seafood continues to be one of the fastest growing sectors in the food and beverage category. However, by 2030, they expect only 60% of fish will be available for consumption. So this is really the problem here is this is one of the main food sources for the human population, but we've overfished, we've stretched our resources too thin, and we're now starting to see some of the negative side effects of our actions or behaviors in terms of ocean management. So this is really why this category or this investment theme has become so popular because people see how important this resource is and the need to properly manage it for future generations. So now that we've talked about those three different categories or overall investment themes, I wanted to move into this slide here, which talks about some of the investment goals or targets set out by the team at Billy Goat Brands. And you can see the different portfolio distribution percentages laid out below here. So the goal would be to have about 40% exposure to the functional food space, 45% exposure, the largest category to plant-based proteins with about 15% focused on food technology. So this would be things like packaging. All of these combine to really support that blue economy theme and really ensure that the companies Billy Goat Brands is partnering with or investing in are living into that ESG mantra. 
And on the right here, you can see an overview of their transaction flow. So out of 100 businesses that they initially look at, on average, about 40 would result in a formal NDA or non-disclosure agreement being created. 25 would then result in investment committee presentation and due diligence. Again, they've got four companies at this stage right now. 20 of those would result in deal negotiations. And out of that initial 100 opportunities identified by Billy Goat Brands, approximately five to 10 of those companies would actually lead to investment. So you can see they're very particular or specific about the brands they invest in. And that's exactly why you end up with this high quality portfolio of brands under the Billy Goat portfolio. So now that we understand the company's mission, their investment strategy and targeted portfolio mix, I wanted to move into a more detailed dive into each of the four companies that they're currently invested in and really give you guys a better understanding of these core businesses. So number one is Cold Enhanced Cold Brew Coffee. Again, 100% ownership in this company. This is a BC-based manufacturer and distributor of organic mushroom-infused cold brew coffee products under the cold brand. So Chaga and Lion's Mane infused cold brew coffee. Both of these are mushrooms containing health benefits, you guys. They're focused on entering the North American market, really leveraging social media and influencer type of marketing. And they're aiming to take a piece or capture a portion of the $23 billion US functional mushroom market that we just talked about a couple of seconds ago. Now, another thing worth mentioning about the cold brand, they've got a really interesting ESG focused packaging and distribution model. So I would encourage you guys to go in and take a closer look at this one for yourself. Again, if you're interested in investing in Billy Goat Brands, I'll leave a link to the company website in the video description below. But Cold is really focused on moving from single use to multi use packaging in a number of different ways here, laid out in the investor presentation. The next brand is Sophie's Kitchen. So this one's focused on plant-based seafood alternatives. Their catchphrase, it's tasty AF as fish. Sophie's Kitchen is a Nevada-based manufacturer and distributor of disruptive plant-based seafood alternatives that enable consumers to eat plant-based without giving up the flavors they love. So again, really focused on ocean or seafood sustainability. You can see some of the different packaging and product options here. So vegan crab cakes, vegan fish fillets, breaded shrimp, and smoked salmon. And Sophie's has been featured in a number of different media outlets, including Forbes, Bloomberg's, Veg News, and The Veg Economist, which are some of the best known publications in the vegan or plant-based food space. And you can see Billy Goat Brands actually has the right to acquire up to a 46% equity interest in Sophie's Kitchen upon funding and conversion of their existing credit facility. So this one definitely represents a huge opportunity for the team at Billy Goat Brands. And in terms of the competitive landscape here, you guys, again, we've talked about some of these competitors on the channel before. You can see Sophie's Kitchen really has done a good job of differentiating themselves. They've got different product categories, so they compete in the frozen and shelf stable space. They've already got established distribution partners and a whole host of different retail customers, including Amazon.com, Walmart, Whole Foods, Sprouts, some of the biggest food retailers in North America. Now next up is the Vegetarian Butcher. So this one is the one that I mentioned hits close to home. You can see two retail locations, one of which is in Kelowna where I actually spent the better part of my 20s. The other one is in Gastown located in Vancouver. And Billy Goat Brands actually owns about 12.4% of the vegetarian butcher. So they're focused on fresh foods that are prepared in house. They have fresh and frozen packaging alternatives, dry and canned ingredients, and they're knowledgeable and passionate about bringing plant-based alternatives to mainstream society and really showing the benefits to the greater population. Now what's interesting about the Vegetarian Butcher, their two inaugural stores were self-sufficient and cash flow positive within two months of opening, which is phenomenal, especially given the economic conditions we've seen over the last couple of years. They're currently under negotiation for two new locations, both of which are in British Columbia, so one in Langley and one in Kamloops, BC, and they've just recently launched their online platform. So if you look at their actual retail growth footprint, by 2024, they're targeting 36 
wholly owned brick and mortar retail locations or stores, which again shows the demand and the appetite for these type of products. And last but not least is Evanescence Packaging. Now, Billy Goat Brands only holds a minority stake in this company. But again, this one's super interesting here. Founded in response to the growing global need to replace existing packaging technology with truly compostable, organic, sustainable alternatives with considerations for strength, insulation, nesting capabilities, and most importantly, cost competitiveness. So we've talked about some of the players in this space on the channel previously. This is a huge growth category, you guys. And again, we're seeing consumers continually ask for these type of alternatives with the caveat that they don't see a significant change in the price of their products. So that's actually specifically called out the cost competitiveness. And this really goes into the food technology category of which Billy Goat Brands is targeting about 15% investment exposure. So with that being said, a super impressive portfolio of investments that the team at Billy Goat Brands has put together. And speaking of the team, I did want to take a quick look at the executive team here. So the company chairman and CEO is Tony Harris. He's got 20 years experience as an investor and entrepreneur and really a range of experience from corporate banking and finance to an award-winning automotive dealership and real estate developer. So Tony has really had his hand in a number of different pots over the years, and he's now bringing that diversified experience to Billy Goat Brands. Now, Chris Dahl is the COO, so Chief Operating Officer and Director. He's got 25 years experience in commercial and retail investment, and previously held executive positions with TD Bank and TD Waterhouse. The other thing that was interesting here, he's got a FinTech certificate from Harvard University, and experience running multifaceted teams in a variety of different locations. So collectively, the team has experience with over $5 billion worth of equity or debt financing deals. And again, that's exactly the kind of experience you want for a company like this that's going out and making investments in a variety of different businesses. So to close things out here, you guys, I wanted to take a look as promised at some of the comparable companies or competitors in this space. Again, Billy Goat Brands has a market cap in the range of about $10 million. So keep that number in mind as we start to look through some of these competitors. So in the functional food space, we've got Laird Superfoods, Whole Earth Brands, and Organto Foods, market caps in excess of $100 million, with Whole Earth Brands coming in closer to $500 million. Within the plant-based protein space, so again, we've talked about some of these on the channel, Very Good Food Company, for example, Beyond Meat, you're seeing a median market cap of $70 million. And in the beverage category, you've got Oatly Group, which is a behemoth in this space with a market cap in excess of about $10 billion. So regardless of the category or subcategory we're talking about, you can see there's a ton of investment attention. These companies are fetching huge market caps in comparison to Billy Goat Brands. And these categories are all expected to grow exponentially over the next couple of years and decades. So for those reasons, you guys, I definitely think this one is worth a look. Again, the share price has pulled back significantly over the last couple of months, representing a great buying opportunity. If you want diversified exposure to the plant-based protein, functional foods, ESG, plant and beverage focused company. Again, you've got that rockstar leadership team with a wealth of experience in creating deals. We talked about their deal model here, you guys, the amount of refinement that the leadership team really goes through in identifying investment opportunities and some of the great brands that Billy Goat already has under their portfolio. So for those reasons, this is definitely one I'd throw on your watch list. Keep an eye on here, you guys. Again, I'll leave a link to the company website in the video description below if you wanna go in and take a closer look for yourself. If you're still watching the video at this point, hopefully you found some value. So make sure you hit the like button before you leave. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of Billy Goat Brands. If you're currently invested in this company and how you think they stack up to some of the competitors shown here. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.